Hello, this is Kalira, live to you from my living room. I've decided to go live a little bit earlier because I got a question about my makeup routine from one of my online students. So I decided to be experimental and show you what I normally do before I go live. I, I'm running a bit late, like always. So I have six minutes. I might be uh, going over time a little bit, but I want to show you what I do anyway. So I start with this. This is coconut oil, just normal, regular, uh, clean coconut oil. And that's what I use to wash my face and also to remove makeup afterwards. So what I do is I just put a bit on my hands on my fingers, rub it all over my face. <laughs> I don't know if anyone sees this. Hi Sophie, so this is for you. I'm putting on the coconut oil <laughs> as I normally do, even before makeup because it's a nice moisturizer and it gets rid of any dirt that might be on my face. And then I take a slightly uh, watered cotton pad and I simply take it off again and it's like a toner and moisturizer and makeup remover and day cream and whatever it's everything at once and this is all I use this is the only thing in my bathroom hi Rosemary so this is my little makeup routine the one I do before I go live so you can join me for this as a little bonus um, it's very wild and rough so usually I don't have time so I just put everything on my face with my fingers so that's what I'll do um, this might be mirrored, I don't know. I will, I will make a picture of everything so you can read it. This is Fit Me by Maybelline, color 105. I have a very light skin tone, but still I get a bit of sunspots in summer. Yes, it removes mascara and eyeliner, everything, even stage makeup. So uh, coconut oil, it's better for your skin than anything else. Hi, Edita. <laughs> My makeup routine starts with coconut oil and it ends with it. So I, before I put it on and after I... Take it off with coconut oil. So Fit Me is what I put on my face, just a little bit on my hand. By the way, if I do a photo shoot and it's outside, I use the same, but I just, I put it on a bit more carefully than now. Now I just <laughs> kind of <laughs> smack everything on my face, but it works, you know, it's good enough to give me a bit of coverage and with good light, <laughs> I use a bit of extra light. So now I have this little lamp and for the video, I have a LED light, so I will show you. And combined with that and a bit of sunlight, it's enough. You don't want to be overly made up for outdoor photo shoots. So I've been experimenting with minimalism. I'm using the same products, only for a photo shoot, I use it with brushes and I take half an hour, not six minutes or seven. So as you see, I'm just kind of <laughs> very wildly, realistically, uh, putting stuff on and rubbing it out. I start in the middle of my face and then I I simply expand it outside and I rub a bit on my neck so it's the same color. <laughs> and I use it as an eyeshadow base if I don't have time. I simply put it on my eyelids also, make sure you don't get it too much in and under my, under my hair. <laughs> so that's it, that's my preparation. If you want to do more, you just add more layers. Bye, bye bye. <laughs> Thank you. You can check the video later. We will also dance, not just this. Then um, this is my favorite all in one package. It has, it's from Urban Decay. It's called Sin. It's not available anymore, but you can get these colors separately. What I use most is this and this, as you can see. And this is a highlighter called Sin. And this is um, concealer, not concealer, sorry. Uh, it's like a bronzer that I use for shade but also for eyeshadow if i don't have much time and the blushes are called kiss off and score and i mix them for my lips and for my cheeks hi megan my makeup routine very simple very quick so what i do after the preparation after the foundation is i just with my finger i know this is very <laughs> very ghetto with my finger i dab on some of the very light highlighter and i make a bit of highlight here and under my eyebrows and a bit in the corner of my eyes. I also do a bit on my nose and here because it highlights my face with the light of the camera. That's it. And I just rub it out. Hi, Sandra. You want to do makeup with me? <laughs> the very quick makeup, but I do if I don't have time. So that's it. That's my um, highlighter. Then I go for the darker color called Paranoid and I, I give myself cheekbones just like this. Normally you do this with a brush and very carefully, but you know, 
time is short. I straighten my nose, which is a bit like asymmetrical, and I put a bit on the corner of my eyes to give me some 3D going outside to inside, and I don't rub too hard, you know, you don't want to mess up your skin, you can do like this. And be more careful than usual. For blush, I use different fingers for every color. I combine these two, it's a bit of uh, pink and a bit more peach, and I lightly dab it on my cheeks. And then my, my hand is the blender. <laughs> Hi! So, a very um, unorthodox makeup routine. Then I use it again for the middle of my eyes. So it's the same peachy color. I know it doesn't look like much, but it's enough for the video. You don't need much makeup. Just a bit of creativity. Then for the lips, same thing. I use the two blushes. And I'm rubbing on. Hello, Cindy. <laughs> You're so professional with makeup. Please look away while you do <laughs> while I do crazy things. So if you want to do more, if you want to highlight a bit, I use, and this is the only expensive thing in my box, it's Yves Saint Laurent, the Touche Eclat, and it's a very good concealer highlighter, it's a pen, you just click it, and then you kind of brush where you want to highlight or conceal. So for me it's just like this, and here a bit, and here a bit, and here a bit, and then the eyebrows just to highlight a bit. And this to straighten my nose. <laughs> so this I do. I got this trick from a TV makeup artist and it really does miracles. So if you haven't had much sleep, you can add this and you just kind of blend it lightly. And it lightens your face. I have to look above the comments <laughs> to see my own face. It's the first time I do something like this. How am I for time? Let me check. Okay. We're going over a little bit, but I'm almost ready. All that I need to add now is a bit of eyebrows because they are quite uneven. And with the light of the video, they kind of disappear. So I have a little brush, but usually I use a pencil and I lost it in the last photo shoot. So again, I use the same two colors. The darker one is for my, hi Anna. Welcome to my video makeup routine. I am not on time for the video, so you'll see me. The highlighter brush and the powder. Why use both? What do you mean? You mean this one? Or this one? Um, I don't... Well, this highlighter is very glittery. It, it uh, catches the light a lot. And this is more like a concealer. It uh, evens out. I put the highlighter on and then this after because otherwise it's too shiny for the... So this is more to even out the skin tone and this is to give it a glow. So I use both. I hope that's the question. You asked me. If not, let me know. So eyebrows, I, I have to be careful here. I just very lightly use brown powder. It doesn't need to be much. It's just to even it out and fill in any gaps. Yes. So this one, that's a very, a very good thing. If you do nothing else, you can even skip the, the actual makeup and only put on this and a bit of glow and you'll be good to go for if you go out in the woods and you want to make selfies, <laughs> like I sometimes do, that's my forest makeup, only those two. As you can see, this is very rough, very quick. That's how it is. Sometimes life is, you don't have much time. You do what you can. Yes, okay, a bit more of the darker brown here. And a bit more of the highlighter. Here, I just add more as I go. I don't want to do too much at once. You can always layer and blend. And a bit more of the peach color in the middle. As you can see, it's slowly starting to become a bit more colorful. Yes, yes, okay. So now I add eyeliner. And this is a liquid eyeliner by NYX. And it's, I love it because it has a real brush. Usually the ones with the sponges, I cannot work with it well. So the one with the brush, if you have a bit of practice with it, and I've been doing this every day, so now it works. I just take it out and I, I take off a bit of the extra liquid, so it's not too much. And then I start from the middle, going out. Oh, I have to look in the mirror because this video gives me delay. <laughs> I hope you can still see it. 
and then I work my way in. So it's a very fine brush. And I go up from where the corner of my eye, I follow this line. There, that's the base. And then I fill in this little corner. I connect it. That's it. So that's eyeliner and it gives me a more open eye. You can see the difference here. So that's the secret. This plus mascara. So here again, I start from the middle because there's more on the brush. You want it to be wider here. I don't go too far, but I use the, the line where my eye goes up. This is, I keep parallel. Hi, Krishna, makeup tips for you. Hi, Sandra. <laughs> I'll get to the dancing in a moment. I'm not saying I cannot talk much and do eyeliner. This, this needs full concentration. And I go further in. I see if it's even. I need a bit more on this side. And then I fill in the little corner right there. So I need a bit more. I hope this works. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. I hope this is useful. If not, <laughs> if not, you can cut it out or I'll, you just join me later. So that's it. That's my little makeup mini routine with more light. It'll look more like professional. And then I add mascara. <laughs> I add mascara just on the lower lashes. And I check, I check with the light of the camera. If I need a bit more of one or the other, I just add as I go. So I do the top lashes mostly, outside a bit more. It's hard to talk and do this. I've never done this with talking. It's a tiny bit on the bottom, just to make it look a bit more even. And if you want, you can go on top of the lashes and out. Yes, <laughs> I know, I know. It's like fine motor skills. Also good for dancing. Actually, if you want, you can try this makeup routine. I will make a picture of everything I used. Hi, Henriette. I'm preparing for the live with you guys so you can see how I do my makeup every time I do videos. Hi, Poppy. Welcome. So that's it. That's it. That's all. That's all I do. Anything else would be just more of the same. So I might add some more highlighter here or here. Maybe here because it's uneven. I might add some more <laughs> of the bronzer, which also use serves as my eyeshadow. And I might add some more blusher on the lips and a bit of the highlighter on the lips. That's it. <laughs> so now I'm ready and I'm taking you to the, maybe you can see it. This is the light that I use for camera. It's attached to the thing that holds the phone and a lot of mess. <laughs> and the actual thing that holds, holds you guys. So there you go. Yeah, get in here. That's it. Now you're back into your familiar environment. <laughs> welcome, welcome. So there we are. I check my hair. I adjust the lights. That's how I done. <laughs> That's how I do my makeup for these classes. So welcome everyone to this bonus live session. I will be uh, updating you on what I have been doing the past few weeks, which has been a lot, and what I will be up to in the next few weeks, which will also be a lot, but it's all fun things. Today we will work on hands. I have a little request from Sandra for a beautiful hand wave variation. And also because this weekend I am hosting my ballet teacher and my contemporary teacher, which is the daughter of my ballet teacher, plus two dance friends, including Sandra, for an online charity workshop, which you can all join. I will, I will talk about this more later. So an online charity workshop that you can join or you can get the recordings and all donations will go straight to a very, very good cause. To prepare us for that, because some of you have never done ballet, which is totally fine, because my teacher is used to teaching belly dancers. I've hosted her for workshops for beginner adults before, and she loves it. She loves teaching adult dancers 
that have not done ballet before or just a little because they are motivated to learn and this this makes her heart happy <laughs> so anyway we will do a little bit of ballet inspired balletic inspired um, transitions and the warm-up that i do before ballet so you can use this warm-up for Saturday, if you join us, right before we do the class. And then you'll be good to go, your hips will be open and your posture will be strong. So, <laughs> before we begin, what I did the last few weeks was I had three photo shoots, one indoors and two outdoors. And uh, as inspiration for it and inspiration from it, I've done two, I've made an online workshop posing for pictures, which you can still get the recordings from in July. And there's a new workshop, posing for pictures too, the outdoor edition, coming up in August. And this is new, you haven't seen the message about it yet, but I will be posting it later today. So you can join it and catch up with part one later. You will get a discount link if you've done one for the other and other way around. So posing for pictures is not only for photo shoots because it also gives you more awareness of how your body is aligned and what looks nice on stage. So how to hold your arms, your presence, your angles, and also how to move in pictures to make it look like you're not just waiting for the picture to happen. And also how to pose in dances so it doesn't look like you're just rushing through the movements. So those two things I will, I will cover in the Posing for Pictures 2 workshop, which you can sign up for via the link in the description. Okay, other things. I've been uh, hunting for the comet, <laughs> new wise. I don't know if anyone has seen it. Let me know in the comments. We went out yesterday into the fields. We had a beautiful open sky, but we did not find it. We didn't see it. We waited from uh, 10 past 10 in the evening, so it was still light, until uh, midnight and we didn't catch it. So I don't know, I hope it's real. <laughs> if you've seen new wise, the comet, let me know. Okay, back to dance. Um, in our today's class, we will be doing a bit, an, an extension of the hand exercises from our, po our posture and hands class series, which is what we do in July. I have closed the enrollments for the live because we're all, are already past half of the month, but you can still sign up and get the recordings and ask me if you have any questions, because I think it's important for dancers to have good posture it will give you confidence and also all the movements you do. If you work on the posture, which we do literally with a bit of workout and stretching, then everything else you do, all the movements will change and they will look and feel more beautiful. So what I find important is that you connect to your body, that you feel the movements, because then the movement doesn't have to come from the brain anymore. You can just move and be confident that what happens will look beautiful because you are connected to it. And that's, that's what I teach in my online classes. Okay, let's move a bit before I talk too much. <laughs> before I lose you all. Let's uh, do a little warm-up. The warm-up that I do for dancing and then the warm-up that I do before ballet. You don't need any props for this, just a bit of space. And a sip of water, maybe. Voila. So let's have the feet. Parallel and gently letting the hands fall down, exhaling and focusing on my wrists, letting my wrists be heavy. I'll go back so you can see. So my wrists drop as I exhale and I sink a bit behind the knees, opening the chest. I lift the elbows here, so it stretches here. And I open, hands stay a bit in front. Exhale here, <clears throat> lifting the elbows, stretching here. Wrists push down. Okay, now the opposite, let's go up. Crossing the hands in front, wrists are leading. Crossing, open. If you're not sure what to do with the hands, think of rotating the elbows out and rotating the hands against it. So, so you can see my thumbs. I'm not there. And I'm lifting the pinkies up. I'm rotating the elbows out and then I lengthen the arms a bit. So I rotate out and I lengthen. So it's a bit of activation here. Hi, Katrine. 
and then I push with the wrist and I open. I push and I open. Push and open. Push and open. Push and open. When I push, I extend the fingers and I extend this part. Let's do this separately. So you have your hands here. They are relaxed. I'm lifting my elbow from here. So my hand comes a bit lower and then I press not with the wrist, but with the middle of my hand. Hi, thank you for the heart. <laughs> so with the middle of my hand, I kind of push, push with this area. That's my secret for beautiful fingers, extending and warming up this little area. Let's do so. So again, the other side, I lift from under the arm, like I would do with a snake arm. I make a diagonal line and then I push not from the wrist but from the middle of my hand and it makes me extend my fingers like a cat would do. Imagine cat paws. So pushing from here, I'm not lifting the fingers but I'm pressing this area out, out. Let's do both hands, press, press and smile. Lifting the elbows and I have them a bit in front so they're not behind me just yet. They're a bit in front. Hi. Yeah, see you next time. <laughs> you, can, you can watch this video later, no problem. Down, 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 down. And I relax in between. Okay, now let's do the opposite. From here, wiggle the fingers. Elbows are out. You can widen the elbows a bit. And cross. Widen and cross. This is a bit of a mini workout. Also one of the things I do before ballet, I make sure I open the chest and open the back. So my shoulder blades kind of slide around my ribs. By keeping my elbows lifted, I have a slightly different rotation here. If I do it here, it's not quite the same. It's a different exercise. So the elbows lift, I cross as far as I can. So opening the back and then I open with the elbows lifted. So I'm opening the chest. Cross and open. You should feel this after a couple of times. Cross and open, cross and open. Let's shake out the arms vigorously <laughs> and shake out the arms above. Okay, little stretch before you continue. The same one as for the lotus hands. Having the elbow bent so the stretch focuses on this area. And then straightening out so the stretch goes all around. So bend and stretch. <laughs> yes, follow me in the pyjamas. This is the advantage of the live Facebook live sessions. And this is also why we are doing the move inspiration online. So the charity event of Saturday will be via Zoom so we can see you. To the first music via zoom so we can see you but also via facebook live for those who want to join and do ballet in their pajamas you can totally do that so I'm stretching here and straightening to have both a stretch in this area and here out and in out hi joyce welcome out and in out and in so i hope many of you can join us this saturday for Inspiration online, let's interlace the fingers and do the same pushing that we did, but do it gently. This goes very deep, it stretches the fingers and also works this area which we will dance with. So, Inspiration online, the online version. Hi, Kiria! A uh, few of you have just signed up for it the past few days, which makes me very happy. It's my way of sharing with you my inspirational teachers. So, I've been taking ballet with Constanze for many years now, but I started as an adult. I was 23 when I took my first class. Only had two classes as a, as a baby almost, as a three-year-old, which was a bit traumatic. But Constanza's class, because she is so gentle and uh, <laughs> gentle, <laughs> she is gentle, hard, hearted, and also very patient, but also very strict, but in the best way possible. It's like you have Russian ballet, teacher but adapted to adult people who um, may have not have any experience in ballet so she knows the struggle but she also wants you to work hard and it's a great great uh, very inspiring experience 
Many people who have taken her workshop, belly dancers who have not taken ballet, started taking ballet classes after her workshops. So she is that inspiring. And meeting her has changed my life, which is why I want to share her with as many of you as possible. Let's press the elbows together and then bend the hands. This is a kind of strengthening and stretch at the same time. And now we'll make waves. So I'm doing this, a hand wave with one hand, and I'm doing a hand wave with the other hand. But I have to bend the tips of my fingers. I have to relax the hand that goes back. And this is a very good exercise. Hi, hey, Henriette. And with this, you can even use this as a party trick <laughs> in dance. I know Serkan, some of you know Serkan, uh, my, my favorite Belgian male belly dance teacher does this with his index fingers. It's a very good exercise also. Let's do this. It's, it's known in Turkish dance. They do this during performances. So index finger at index finger. You do a little wave. So one finger goes a bit beyond the other. Yes. Let's switch fingers. Very tricky. <laughs> Especially the ring finger. Even just getting into this position. You can see me struggle. And the pinky. Okay, I have to reset. And the pinky. Thumbs. I don't even know if this works. Not quite yet. And shake it out. A very good warm up for the fingers. So now for the hips. What I do before ballet class or before teaching anything with traveling steps and um, traveling steps and turns, we will do a bit of this in the combination of today. Is I I gently rotate my hips in and out. So you can hold something for balance. What I'm doing is I'm making a figure eight with my knee. I'm drawing a figure eight with my knee. And my foot kind of follows. So it's not the foot doing anything. It's my knee and it will make my hip rotate. So in front of me or a bit more open. So the figure eight goes on my side. <laughs> Other side. It's also a good balance exercise. So my knee does a tiny figure eight in the front and then I open a bit more so the figure eight goes, a bit, goes around me, so to say. Yes. And you can bend your standing leg for balance. Shake out, shake out. Another thing we do is you grab something for balance again. You center your pelvis with one hand and you swing your leg. You don't have to swing it high for it to be effective. I always start with a low swing, but I turn my leg out a bit because then it's more free in the socket. So if you do parallel, you might be a bit more limited. If you turn it out slightly, it activates a different part of you. <laughs> you have to be careful with the furniture. Let me see how to do it. So like this, just swing five hand very loosely. My knee bends and my leg just kind of falls. And then five, where I give a bit more impulse, especially up. So now this is nice and warm. Yeah, the standing hip also benefits from it. Let's do a couple just very loosely. So I turn out a bit and then let my leg swing. <clears throat> and turning out without stepping on the leg is also a good mental preparation for good lines. So just a couple, this is more than five already. And then you give a bit more impulse to the front, bending the knee to find a bit more fibers to warm up. Yes, and then you shake out. And now when you walk around, let's walk around, you should feel your hips a bit more and this also will have you, hi Annie, have you connect to your feet. So feet and hands will be what's dancing today. One more thing, uh, for the wrists, we will be pushing down and up like we did for the lotus hands. Let me give myself a bit more light. Up and down like for the lotus hands. And now we do it switched. So one wrist goes up, one goes down. One up, one down. One up, one down. At the same time. Now a bit faster. One, two, one, two. As you can see, hopefully, my elbows stay more or less in place. It's the wrists that go up and down. And my fingers stay in the same place. If you see my cupboard here, I focus on that, I relax my elbows down and then my wrists go up and down 
but my fingertips stay in the same place. This is, and also here I focus on the comment line of Joyce. <laughs> and I try to keep my fingers in the same spot, so the wrists warm up more. And you can do this with straight arms, let's try it. Then you have to lift the whole arm, but the fingertips stay in the same spot. Yes, that's it. And we'll use this in the movement. Hi, Rita, welcome. So on to the finger exercise. I got a really nice video clip from Sandra uh, about a week ago, where a dancer was doing beautiful hand waves, and then she separated the fingers. I don't know if you can see this. So it's a hand wave, but then with the fingers walking separately. And it's a beautiful effect, so we will try it. Let's do some normal hand waves to begin. So first the hand goes around, it relaxes as if you're around your hip. Then you pull up the fingers or push with this joint. But the fingers are still relaxed and rounded. So it's like <laughs> loud music. <laughs> so it's like you have a pull-up bridge here. The hands stay in place and then you pull the fingers up or you push out this little joint. From there you extend the fingers and then you push down. So the hand relaxes, the fingers pull up, you can see here, then you extend and push at the same time. One, two, three, and push. One, two, three, and push. I'm keeping my thumb next to the rest. One. No, Laeli, I did not see the comet. <laughs> we were there for an hour and we didn't see it, but we saw some beautiful stars, even some meteorites or falling stars. Fireballs, if it's big, big ones, we saw them. And we saw Jupiter, so on the other side of the sky, a uh, very bright planet and even the Milky Way. So we had a beautiful evening watching stars, but we did not see the comet. One, two, three, and down. One. If you have seen Leo Wise, let me know. <laughs> we are not giving up just yet. Three, and down. One, two, three. And now let's do one after the other. A bit faster. So it's like the sea. One, two, one, two. Let's cross the hands as far as you can so the elbows meet. Start the wave and open. And now we go diagonal. I'm tilting my rib cage and looking down. And we're doing the elbows to the back that we practice in the warm up. Then we can come down. Other elbow on top. Hi, Saskia. So elbows meet, hand waves from the side. And then you open the elbows, open the elbows, open the elbows. And you kind of lean. Elbows go to the back. And then you can switch hands and continue. Let's come down. <laughs> I have to bend so you can see my other hand. So plie. And at the same time, my elbow comes straight down. And I follow it with my eyes. Other side the same, elbow comes straight down. So it's pulling my hand and I try to match the speed with the speed of my hand wave. Coming up. My hands are doing this and then I switch. Hand waves here and then I switch and I come down. Same thing here. Hands face each other, I pull up as high as I can, and then I switch. Hand waves. Hand waves. And down. Same thing, you can start a bit lower. Elbows turn and open. Other side, elbows turn. And open. Okay, now let's try the variation because your hands should be nice and warm now. The variation where you do the fingers separately. So it's like you're walking. Walking, 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 walking. Let's try it with relaxed fingers first. 
Hi, Katrin. Hi, Saskia. Lita. So we are, we are doing hand waves, but with the fingers separate. And I'll show you the video later where uh, that Sandra sent me for inspiration. It looks crazy. And I'm, I'm practicing this, so this is just a beginner version. Normal hand wave. And I try to time it so the wave stays in place. I really imagine I go around something. Yes, and then I do this, but with the fingers extended and I'll push it. So I, I walk and I extend, I push this area out at the same time. It can be tricky to get the pinky to bend <laughs> and to relax the face, don't mind my face. And then you can do it with two hands at the same time. It's a kind of mesmerizing effect. <laughs> I'm looking very intense because I'm focusing, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me know if you try this, if this works for you. I've tried to teach my husband because he rocked the lotus hands. I don't know if you've seen Mr. E's lotus hands. It was amazing and he did some bonus facial expressions for the posing for pictures workshop <laughs> at the end. It's posted in this group. So same thing here. I slow down. What I do here is my elbow travels behind me and I keep my hand a bit lower by rotating here to give me a better line for this. Then I do a gentle hand wave, only 85% of effort. And this alone is already beautiful. See my elbow travels behind me so I can keep the wave going longer before I come down. Then I add the walking, so it's, it's like a little wave but with bent fingers and then with a bit of a push so my fingers go up. So a normal wave, a soft one, walking. I kind of like this also. And then walking with a wave. Normal hand wave, walking. As you can see, the, the mesmerizing effect is because of the speed of the elbow. This you need to experiment with a bit. There, and then walking. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> and then walking with the hand wave. Once you have it, you can use this with one hand or two hands, keeping the elbows parallel for extra effect. And if you have a group of dancers, this is something I saw in a video, one person can be here, one person can be here, and one person can be here. And then you can do waves together, so on three levels, and then play with the arms. <laughs> I saw this and it was, it was mind-blowing, a beautiful uh, effect. So anything you can do with the walking fingers or normal hand waves with parallel hands. As you can see the line from my elbow to my fingers is what makes the effect. Yes. Okay, now let's add to these beautiful hands a bit of movement. I'm going over time because I started late. <laughs> so you have a bit of bonus. <clears throat> what I want to do is um, use snake arms, what we worked on in our um, posture and arms online classes of July, which you cannot join anymore live, but you can sign up for next month, August. We do traveling steps. And of course, uh, the hands and arms part, you can still get the recordings. Just the live portion is closed because the month is almost over. Almost over. I will put a link up so you can enroll for whatever you want. I have classes for, from August, September, October and November. You can sign up and just pay once per month. Let's join the snake arms. And you pay once per month automatically or you can just sign up for each month separately. We will do traveling steps and turns in August, veil vale in September, fan veils in October, and in November, belly work. That on the side. But for now, we'll do a bit of balletic inspired traveling as a preparation for Saturday if you want to join, and just to add the hands to movement. So what I want to do is use snake arms with a rotation in the upper body. 
and this will give them a more 3D feeling. Hi Ina! So I'm doing regular snake arms, I'm tilting my ribcage a bit, but I'm also twisting. So I'm going to do both arms here, both arms here, and you, as you can see my feet stay the same. I'm just rotating the upper body and it frees up the dancing. Because in class you might learn only this or practice only this with a mirror. As soon as you turn your upper body a little and tilt, immediately it becomes more like dance. And this I also used for the latest photo shoot outside, which I'll be expanding more on in the Posing for Pictures workshop. I use my regular dancing and I make sure it is 3D by rotating and tilting. So normal snake arms, rotating, rotating and tilting and tilting. And this you can do with any movement but I like it with snake arms because it expands the effect. Just like the hand waves with the fingers, it adds an extra dimension. So you're three dimensional dancing. Then, to add a bit of swoosh to it, I use turn up from ballet, from the hip, and I step on it, and I use a plie in the back leg, also from ballet. I step on it, and then I catch myself. So instead of just a turn, it'll give me a kind of coming down and up effect because of the plie, and it will give me speed because the hip is the most powerful joint. And turning out already, with a plie, will, it's like pulling a bow. I will pull the bowstring, then if I contract, just by breathing and pulling in, it's like you release the arrow, and you have a lot of energy and drive, but it doesn't cost any effort, so you still have your mind free for expression. And I love this little, it's a detail, but you can use it anywhere in dance. And it's designed from ballet, added underneath what you do in belly dance and that's why I love the combination of the two. I love practicing different dance styles because you learn this kind of thing and you can use it in whatever style you do. So I recommend if you can to join on Saturday Moospiration Online you will be uh, supporting a very very good cause the ladies of Dance for Children which is Coralie, Tammy and me. We will give all donations, all inscriptions. Hi, hi, hello! All donations will go directly to one of our partners, which this year is uh, Chameleon Philippines. And they are a shelter for girls and young children that are sexually abused in the Philippines. And they don't only offer shelter, so they take children out of uh, abusive homes, but they also support them and give them an education. Some of the children who were uh, supported by Chameleon later went on to study in university and even studied law. They also give them legal representation if they want to uh, sue the one who attacked them. And they help the families. If it's a very poor family and they have to rent out their children, they try to support the families themselves, so they take the problems at the roots. And this, I think, is such good work, and it's not much known, that we want to support them any way we can. And that's why I'm setting up this whole day of workshops for only a good cause. So we, the teachers, we don't get paid anything. We give our classes for free to this event. And so any, any donation, any participation, even if you cannot dance, but just support us, it'll go straight directly and in full to this very good cause. So thank you to everyone who signed up already. We are very excited to do this. But on the other hand, it's also good for dancers to get, get in contact with very good teachers. And I know Constanze, how much she did for me. I want to share it with as many dancers I can. So you'll get to meet Constanze, her daughter, <clears throat> uh, Julia, who is my points teacher and also my contemporary teacher. Anna, who is the most beautiful dancer we have in our class. And she teaches Zouk, Brazilian uh, couple dancing, but the solo style. Sandra, who is here, will be doing a Tai Chi Qigong cool down, which will be nice after all day. And I will do a bit of belly dance, whatever Constanza wants to learn. So I'll be teaching her. You will see my ballet teacher trying belly dance. This alone is worth the ticket. <laughs> so what we will do is plie. We turn out before we start, like I always do. I'm turning my hip from the socket. This is why we did the warm up with the figure eights. I exhale and I catch myself. And this leg turns out, if you can see, it turns out with no weight on it. So I'm dancing here. Rotating the upper body with snake arms. I step out. 
and I do a little plie and catch to give it <laughs> 3D effect. Here again I can plie and rotate. Snake arms made 3D and I tilt. When I feel ready I prepare by going the opposite direction. This leg turns out and I catch myself. And I hold the I hold my breath for a moment so the energy is stopped. Let's do it again. Snake arms, down and up. I prepare by going in the opposite direction. So it's like this, but over there. I turn out this leg and swoosh around. Hold it for a moment, pulling in, chest out, and then I go back to relax it. Side to side. A bit of a tilt. And then I do both arms to prepare away from the stepping. I turn out and I catch. This arm is kind of up and I'm tilting to make it look higher. Hi Stephanie, welcome. So we're doing a little mini combination. That's part one. Snake arms, rotation, tilting, preparing and a little pose. Then we melt again. Second part is a turn. And with this turn, I use this hand with a rotation of my elbow and the rotation of my lower arm. So I go around my head and I start with my fingers away. So I start like this and I go around like this. So let's do this together. <laughs> Hi, welcome. So I do a little circle with the wrist and hand but it's above my head. And then I rotate this part there. And as you notice, this kind of blocks from here, so it depends on the flexibility of your back muscle. And that's what brings you around. So the point is, this arm brings you around. This arm brings you around. And you don't have to do any effort. So I don't have to step around. I simply turn out this leg and I use turn out this leg and I use this arm to swing me around so the other arm can be dancing and free. Let's do a few hand waves with the walking and swish around. This arm goes there. Hope this makes sense. <laughs> we'll put it all together. So we have the hand waves with walking fingers coming down. Then we do snake arms. Then we tilt and twist. We prepare. We pose. And then from here, I bring this arm down. I step out and I swing around all the way. And then we're back at the beginning. Let's do this for one song and then I release you <laughs> into the world again. Thank you for joining everyone today. It's a in-between bonus live session because there's so much going on and coming up that um, this, this way you have a bit of a live update on what I am creating and uh, what I am offering online. And you can put your questions in the comments or just write to me and I will help you out. So what I have going at the moment are the Posture and Arms online classes, but they are closed for now. You can only get the recording still um, on my website kalidadance.com slash online. The next series that comes up that you can still join live or with recordings is August. We will have four weeks of strength, flexibility and dance focusing on traveling steps, which includes a bit of what we do here and is inspired by um, ballet and contemporary but also with my background in uh, belly dance as well so you can sign up for august and join me for four weeks three classes a week of half an hour each and if you cannot make it to any of the classes you can simply join them on facebook like this one but in a separate group or you can catch the recordings later so the august classes are open now for posing for pictures too, 15th of August, you can also enroll. But if you follow the August online classes, you get 50% off the picture for posing workshop. So sign up for the 
weekly classes first if you want to do both because then you get 50% off the pictures posing pictures workshop <laughs> so those are the two things that I'm offering that are um, coming from me so you get discounts for one if you take the other and this weekend is the charity event of which all income and donations go straight to Chameleon Philippines and you will get classes by my ballet teacher, my contemporary teacher, Sandra for Qigong Tai Chi, Anna for Zouk, so for free upper body movement and a bit of a turning combination, me for belly dance, and you will get all the videos. If you donate 25 euros or more, you will get all the videos of the whole day forever to practice. You'll get a pocket Kalida, pocket Constanze, pocket Julia, and a pocket Anna and Sandra for a good class. So let's, <laughs> let's do the combination one more time. From here, weights on one leg, you turn out slightly. You start with crossing the arms and hand waves. And twisting diagonally, following the upper hand. Opening, then bringing both arms down and then doing the walking fingers, elbows straight down. Coming up with a snake arm, a bit of a tilt, and tilt, and then looking in the direction of my arm. Now a bit of twist, twisting all the way back. Both arms prepare, I'm stepping out and posing, and release. Back to snake arms. Now I'm going to turn, so I'll step out again, and this arm will swing around. And I catch myself. Let's go back. Other foot. Turning out. Hi Tilly, welcome. So, gently coming down and up. Crossing the arms. And let's do the other arm on top. Hand waves. down, all the way up. <clears throat> I've been talking so much. Finger walking. Snake arms. To the back. Tilt and twisting. And you can do this with props also, by the way. Especially the swoosh and stuff. And the turn. This is the turn I like to do with fan veils and let's turn around and then I bring my elbow in okay one more time on each side so I'm standing this leg is out relaxing the shoulders crossing the arms all the way where the leg is in front that arms on top let's do it like this so I'm sure I've done both arms and I tilt up Keeping both elbows, pulling them out. If I can't go any further, I sink down, bring it up. Elbows down. Walking the hands. Fingers point straight up. Snake arms. Snake arms. A bit of tilting. Tilting. And twisting. Twisting, snake arm here, <laughs> snake arm here. Now I swing both arms and I prepare, stepping out, plie, and catch. And then I continue. Twisting, twisting. Let's turn. So this arm will go around and it will swing me around. This foot will step and catch. And then I twist my upper body and bring my elbow in front. Stepping back so you can see my feet. <laughs> Second round. So where the leg is in front, the arm is on top. And I can tilt here or here. Both is nice. Simple hand waves. Coming down and up. Shoulders down, hands Palms facing in, walking the fingers, walking the fingers. Let's 
Inhale and snake on. Plie. I'm using turnout and plie from ballet. And a bit of biodynamics. Twisting the upper body. And tilting. Which we also do in ballet. We have a lot of upper body rotation. Uh, it's called epaulement. Epaulement. Shouldering, if you translate it to English. And that's what makes ballet so beautiful. They don't just have the hand positions, they use the upper body and angles. And this I, I draw from for dance as well as for picture posing. So using <laughs> ballet science, sneakily for belly dance, I prepare, I turn out and I catch myself by pulling in here. I hope you're still joining. <laughs> Let me know if you have questions about this or any of the classes because we'll work on this more. Then I will go around with my hand here and it will turn me to this direction. So I'll prepare by stepping out here. Swoosh around. The direction I came is where I will twist and continue. So we have almost an hour <laughs> because I've been talking so much. <laughs> I hope that's okay with you guys. Let's finish with a few hand waves and the final snake arm thank you for joining me today and to those who have been following my online videos and our classes I appreciate I appreciate all of you and I'm happy I get to share some of my movements so that's it that's it for today I hope you have a great Wednesday and that you'll feel your hands and shoulders for the rest of the day. You will have like a, an open posture, hopefully, for, for the remainder of today. If you have any questions about anything I talked about, about the charity workshop, which you can still join this weekend. It's on Saturday between 11 and 3, but you can get the recordings and watch whenever you want. Let me know. And if you are interested in my online classes, for August we will do traveling steps and some strengthening and opening of the hips. Uh, you can sign up for that or let me know. If, if you cannot find the link, I will send it to you. And uh, this Friday, in two days, I will be sending out a tip drop, which is a membership you can subscribe for and you'll get weekly short videos, like five to ten minutes, of me explaining some practical tips or things that I have learned uh, and share them with you via email. So you get a little video of me in your email box every Friday. And you can just pay once per month. It's about uh, six euros, I think, per month. And you will get a video every week for that. And it goes automatically. You don't have to do anything. I'll just be emailing you on every Friday and you'll have a little new video of me. And this is separate from all of the classes, but you get discounts if you are a Tip Drops member. This Friday, we will work on facial expressions, something that my husband is very good at, <laughs> but I have struggled with it in dance and also on pictures. So the things that help me, I've put them into this Friday's tip drop. Okay, that's all from me for today. I hope you have a great day and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Also for dancer, if you have any topic wishes, I can do a free video once per month, like this one in the group here. And if there's any questions, like the finger walking Sandra requested, I'm happy to make a new video for you. So enjoy today. Bye bye. See you soon.